What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sports topic, and today we're going to talk some football. Houston Texan football. Today we're going to talk about a position that probably has the biggest log jam out of all the positions for the Houston Texans, and that's the tight end position. As of right now, the Houston Texans currently got four tight ends on their roster. NFL teams normally carry three. And I know technically last year the Texans did carry four, but they had one that was on injured reserve for the majority of the season, and they had another that was on injured reserve throughout the whole season. So we're going to talk about exactly can the Houston Texans offense really handle four tight ends or is it going to be an odd man out and if there's going to be an odd man out which one is going to be because I think the tight end position might be one of the most important positions going into the season offensively the reason why is because we're going to lean on the tight ends because we've been talking about receivers and we're talking about the speed you know with Brandon Cooks and Kenny Steeles and Wolfful and things like that because of all that speed on the outside Defenses are going to use a lot of corners and a lot of safeties to cover those because they got covered deep, uh, deep downfield, which means that the uh, linebackers are going to be the ones primarily guarding and covering tight ends. That's going to create huge mismatches, especially if you have athletic, serviceable tight ends to create those mismatches. Like I've been saying, Deshaun Watson is going to be very cerebral this year. I feel that he's going to be able to find those mismatches and uh, pick them apart. Then also the defense is going to probably have spies on Deshaun because he's a mobile quarterback, able to use his leg to get first downs. We also have running backs able to catch out the backfield. So because of those because of those assets, tight ends are going to be very key because I think tight ends are going to be the position group that's going to be forgotten about the most according to the defenses. So I think if you can exploit that, that's going to pay huge dividends for your offense. Like I think that Deshaun is going to have the season I feel he's going to have. He's going to lean on his tight ends a lot. So let's talk about the tight ends. The first tight end I want to talk about is Jordan Akins. I think that Jordan Akins is probably the most athletic tight end that we have. Not saying he's the best, but he's the most athletic, the most explosive. He led the uh, the team. He led the tight ends on the team last year with uh, 36 catches. 414, 18 yards, something like that. He only had two touchdowns. But think about any time that you think of a big play with a tight end, Jordan Aik was on the reception. Uh, he was on the other end of that reception. You know, the game against the Eagles two years ago when Deshaun was bouncing off of uh, Eagle defenders and threw the yard, threw the ball maybe like 30 yards downfield, Aikens caught it. The game against the Colts, uh, maybe two weeks before that, when Deshaun scrambled, broke out the pocket and threw a 50-yard pass downfield, Aikens was on the other side of that. The game against the Chargers, he had two big tight, uh, two big touchdowns, especially the one when he Deshaun scrambles out the packet and it looks like he's about to run. And in the last minute, he decides to throw the football. Aiken takes it around for a fifty-one yard touchdown. Things like that, able to create those big explosive plays. Um, kind of small in frame. He's the smallest of the tight ends. He's only six four. I think like two hundred and forty some pounds. So he's the smallest of the tight ends, but he's the most athletic and the most gifted. As far as at, from a, from an athletic standpoint, able to make those big splash plays, uh, splash plays. Not saying he's going to be a pro bowler or a pro tight end, but I do think he's going to be able to help create mismatches because of his athleticism. Now, another tight end I want to talk about is the other Jordan, it's Jordan Thomas. Um, Jordan Thomas is six five, two hundred and seventy seven pounds. Didn't play uh, too much last year. Only played in five games because he was on injured reserve for the majority of the season. Only had one catch for eight yards. But the year prior, he had 212 yards, had four touchdowns, and he's just a big red zone target. When you look at him, he reminds you of Antonio Gates because he's that he has that type of body type. He's that type of body type. He, he reminds you of Antonio Gates. He's big. He's long, and he's a big red zone target. A guy you think can get touchdowns by by, uh, by the boatload because he's so big. He should be a big red zone target. And he was that his rookie year. I think both times, uh, I think the four touchdowns he had came in a, in a two in a two span game. I know he caught two touchdowns against Miami on Thursday night, and I think he caught two touchdowns the following week against Denver, uh, his rookie year. And that's how he was able to get those four touchdowns. He's a big, huge red zone threat. And the problem with him is that might be the only thing he is. And I think that he got into Bill O'Brien's doghouse last year because he got hurt. I think he cracked his ribs in the preseason, and then he was on injured reserve. And then when he came back, he wasn't in shape. And I think that's the reason why he only, even though he was active for five games and quote-unquote played five games, only had one only had one reception. So I think he, he, he kind of got in Bill O'Brien's doghouse, you know, as Kiki, as Hopkins. As Davion Clowney, as Deontay Foreman, 
what it's like being in Bill O'Brien's doghouse. The only one that I just named is still in on the Texans as of right now is Kiki, and we all have we all think that Kiki more than likely is going to be the odd man out when it comes to the receiving group. Like we don't think it's looking good for Kiki to even be on this roster when the season starts. So we know once you get in Bill O'Brien's doghouse, and some of these decisions were made before Bill O'Brien was actual general, general manager. So now that he's named general manager, if he's in this doghouse, will he still be on the roster? So he could be the odd man out, mostly because of I, I know we I know we were able capable able to do during the red zone his body type and things like that. But because he's in Bill O'Brien's doghouse. There's a real legitimate possibility he might not be on this roster. Now, the other tight end, uh, um, and that uh, I want to talk about is Darren Fells. Darren Fells last year uh, broke the Texas uh, record, was set the Texas record for the most touchdowns by a tight end, had seven tight ends, I mean, uh, seven touchdowns. And uh, for the first half of the season, was very effective. The first eight games, when we used a lot of RPOs, he was very effective. He was dominant. It would look like he was on his way of being a Pro Bowl tight end. It looked like he was going to get his first career Pro Bowl bid the way that he was able to play. Because in those first eight games, I think he had five to six touchdowns. I think it was six. But at least five, but it might have been it might have been six. The last eight games of the season is the problem. Because once we stopped using RPOs, he no longer became effective. He had one touchdown against the Patriots off of RPO. And then after that, there, there was no more, like, like Darren Fails basically became non-existent. Once is the difference between using the RPOs and not. So is he limit? Is he like, is he extremely limited? Or is it just the defense was able to catch up to him? I don't know which one it was, but I do know this. Also, in that playoff game against the Buffalo Bills, in that second half, Deshaun Watson only had one incompletion. And it happened overtime. And it was a Darren Fells drop, wide open drop first down. Darren Fells had a first down, wide open, and he dropped it. When nobody by him, wasn't a bad throw. It hit him right in the hands. He called it, turned, and then dropped it. And that wasn't the first time, but that one was one of the ones that was most critical and crucial. One, playoff game. Two, overtime. Three, if he would have caught that pass, Deshaun Watson would have went perfect for the second half of that playoff game. So, that right there is a problem. Now, what goes into Darren Fell's favor is that the Texans just gave him a contract because he was a free agent and they gave him a contract, if I'm not mistaken, I think... It was worth uh, $3 million, $3 million. I think it was two years, $3 million, something like that. I know it was a two-year deal. It was a two-year, $6 million, and he got $3 million a year. Not significant money. Of course, not starting NFL top five uh, tight end money, but still gave him a contract when you really didn't have to because you had Aikens, you had Thomas, and then the guy I'm about to name after this that you just drafted. You really didn't have to give him one, but... I could kind of see maybe you want to bring him back just in case. Thomas, not in shape. And then the guy that we drafted last year, not really ready to play. Uh, like Darren Fields is 6'7", uh, 278 pounds. So another big, rangy guy. Another guy who is a huge red zone target. Problem, also problem with him, I think he's 33, 34 years old. So he's an older guy. You know, he played uh, basketball. He didn't play college football, if I'm not mistaken. So... That's kind of the problem with him. The age, and then also, once we start using RPOs, he no longer became effective. But what's in his favor is that he has a contract. So I can see them going both ways with him. I can see them keeping him because of the contract, and I can see him also not having the job because the age, and also just not being the best guy, on the, t uh, the best tight end of the group. Now, the ultimate wild card. And that is Kahala Warren, the guy that we drafted in the third round last year um, out of San Diego State. And you have to watch his college tape because he, I don't even think he played in the preseason last year. And I, I couldn't find any preseason pre tape of him. Um, I, as much as I looked, I couldn't find. The only tape I could find was his college tape. And he's very athletic. He has some talent. I like what I've seen. Now, the problem is... Can that translate into the NFL? I think it possibly can because of the way, like I said, about the corners and the safeties uh, be able to, uh, go, going back deep because of the way the receivers are going to be uh, taking away the coverages and also who's the guy who's throwing them the football. So I do think that Kyle Warren can be effective. And I do think, I'm not saying that he's going to be dominant, but I, I can see because he does have, he, he catches the ball real well. He has, athletic, he, he has a little athleticism of himself. 
and I can see him emerging to being a nice tight end. I think probably out of all four of the tight ends, he has the most potential of being the tight end. He has the most potential out of the four of being a pro bowler type tight end. Because I don't think Akins, even though Akins is very athletic and gifted, Akins is kind of a tweener, kind of in between tight end, in between receiver. Not really one or the other. And he's limited in some of the things, even though he can make some splash plays. I don't think he's a tight end that you can lean on like a Travis Kelsey, like a like a Gronk, like a uh, like a Kittles. I don't think he's a tight end that you can uh, um, lean on like a Ty Heap and things like that. I don't think he's a tight end or Owen Daniels back in the day for the Texans. I don't think he's a tight end that you can lean on week in and week out and make him a Pro Bowler. Uh, same thing with uh, with, um, with Jordan Thomas, even though he has the body type of Antonio Gates. I don't think. He has the, I don't think he has the talent of Antonio Gates or have the talent of a, a um, um, damn, he used to play for the Saints. Can't think of his name. Play for the Saints. I think, uh, I think now he plays for, uh, Green Bay. Damn, can't think of his name. But, uh, went from the Saints to Seattle. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if he's, even though he could be a huge red zone target, I think that's his limitation. I think he's a red zone target. Now, if he slims up a little bit, because I do think some of his issues is that, that he comes in a little bit out of shape. If he slims up a little bit, maybe he could become more of a dominant tight end. Maybe he could be more of a dominant muscle. Hey, I'm going to take this ball away from you. You can't get it from me. So maybe he could be, but I don't know yet. I think that, that uh, Colin Warren is the better combination of all those type of tight ends. And I think that he has the best potential to actually be a Pro Bowl level tight end. Not saying he's going to be. I just think out of the four, he has the best shot. And also, because you spent the third round pick on him, and he hasn't even played yet because he was on injury reserve all of last year, I think he's going to make the team. Same thing with Akins. Akins is the most athletic tight end right now that you have. The guy who's going to give you the biggest splashes plays, he's going to make the t- he's going to make the team. So it's more so out of fails and Jordan Thomas. One of those two in my personal opinion, is not going to make the team. I don't think the Texans are going to carry four tight ends unless the NFL allows, the, which has been talked about, that the rosters are not just going to be at 53. It's going to be expanded because they're going to eventually add the 17 game. Also, they add the 17 into the playoffs and then also the pandemic. So because of that, that is a possibility that you can add and keep four tight ends on the roster. Then, but you're probably only going to activate three on game day, and I think they're going to probably flip flop out of Aiken. I'm not at Aikens, out of uh, Thomas and out of Fails of who's going to be able to, uh, who's able is going to be the person who's going to be active because we don't know exactly about the preseason, how the preseason is going to work, if they're going to have a preseason. All those things have to uh, come into effect to see exactly what we're going to see out of Kyle Waring, out of Jordan Thomas, out of Jordan Aikens, and out of Darren Fails. But I think you know what you got out of Aikens. I think you know. I know. I think you know the athleticism you got out of Akins. It's going to be. You don't really know what you have out of Kyle Winry, but you got to see because you spent the third round pick on him, and he has a lot of potential. Now, potential means that he might not even be nothing. He might just be trash. But also, he could also have the potential to be the best tight end on the roster. So you have to see what you have out of Kyle Winry. It's going to be out of Jordan Thomas and out of Darren Fells. In my personal opinion, I would lean towards Thomas. And I would I would get rid of Darren Fells. I, I wasn't happy with the Darren Fells signing. I think Darren Fells is the guy that you can let walk because I think Darren Fells out of the four tight ends is the more is the one who's the most limited. Use RPOs, he's good, he's money. Once they stop using RPOs, he fell off a cliff, became non existent. And I know now that Tim Kelly is going to be calling plays. Maybe they're going to be able to use more RPOs and able to use Darren Fells more effectively. But my thing is if he's only effective during the RPO game, that makes him extremely limited. That limits your offense. And I don't want this offense with all this weapons. We've been talking about all this speed and all this versatility we have with the running backs and Deshaun Watson's a versatile quarterback himself. I don't want a player on this field that's going to be limited. This is going to limit it. This is going to make the offense very limited. And I think that's something that Darren Fails would do. He would make this offense limited. You have Akins. You can do a lot of H-back stuff with as well. And I think Kyle Wynn also think Jordan Thomas, you can use, you can create mismatches with him because of the, 
because how big Jordan uh, Thomas is, I think you'd be able to create mismatch. Because of the athleticism of of Jordan Akins, I think you could be able to create mismatches. I think because of the talent that Kyle Warren has, you'll be able to create mismatches. The potential that he has, you'll be able to create mismatches, especially with Deshaun Watson being your quarterback. So I think the tight end should be, as of right now, it, it should be Thomas and Akins. It should be your one and two as you work Kyle Warren in to into into a role. And I think that Akins, I think Akins will always be a player that's all, always be on the field because of his athleticism. He can always be that second tight end. You know, Bill O'Brien comes from a system in New England where they used to run a lot of tight end sets. So I definitely think that Akins has a place on the field. And I say you start off with Akins and Thomas as you work Kyle Warren in. I don't really think Darren Fields really should have a place. But in saying that, that's me. I have a feeling that Bill O'Brien's going to go the opposite and go Jordan Akins, Darren Fells, and Kylie Warren. And Jordan Thomas be the odd man out because he was in his doghouse last year. And not mostly because of the, uh, because of him not being in shape. Now, we're going to see when this pandemic is over because I know the coaches just were able to allow back in the building on Friday. We're going to see... When the players are able to allow, hopefully in the middle of July, end of July, whenever the players are able to come out there and able to start uh, either some type of mini camp or training camp or something like that, exactly what kind of shape that uh, Jordan uh, Thomas is in. If they have a preseason, what type of preseason we have, what type of shape Jordan Thomas is in. Hopefully Jordan Thomas can show some things because, like I say, he's a huge red zone target, and I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that because without Hopkins, you don't have no big red zone target. And that's another reason why tight end is going to be a very, very key position because we got all the speed. What's going to happen when these guys get short, at the get, get stopped at the five-yard line? Now you need to punch it in. I got a video talking about the running backs, and my question is about we'll be able to punch it in on the ground. Now without Hopkins, we won't have a true guy who can go out there and catch 50-50 balls. These tight ends are going to come in key. And you're going to need a mismatch tight end, a big, strong tight end to be able to dominate in the red zone. And I think that could be Jordan Thomas. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holla.